Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful time we're having in the Lord this morning. I want you to take your Bibles. We're going to read a couple verses, then I'll let you sit down. We're going to continue in our study in the book of Ephesians, knowing your identity in Christ. And we're going to pick up starting in chapter 6 today, beginning at verse number 1, and we'll read down the verse number 4. Thank you very much. Ephesians 6, verse 1 through 4, knowing your identity in Christ. It says like this, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and the instruction of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just ask right now for your Holy Spirit to touch our hearts and our minds. And God, that you would speak into us, God, today, Lord, and that we would leave here changed and transformed. And God, I ask that you would just touch me, that I could speak the words that you've given me for today. And we're careful to acknowledge you give you all the praise, all the honor, all the glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. You can be seated. Last week we talked about God's plan for the family, so we're going to continue with that theme, and we're going to be talking about parenting. Come on, somebody. First of all, how many parents are here today? How many of you have kids? doesn't matter how old they are. So we have a, a lot of children, a lot of parents. One writer said this, most parents do not want godly children. They want good children. Children who won't give them a hard time. Children who won't do drugs or have sex. They want children who will fit in very well with all of their peers, but not necessarily godly children who will stand against the culture. Let me know this morning, God wants to raise up young people that are willing to take a stand against the spirit of this age. God wants to raise up our children to be able to be a shining light in the midst of dark, not just good children, but God wants us to raise up godly children. Now last week I mentioned how we talked about the goal of marriage and how it, the goal of our marriage is to be an image of Jesus' love for the church. How I many know oh, Jesus loves the church, right? He loves the church. And, and as, as husbands and wives, we're to love our spouse with that same kind of love that Jesus had for the church. And we know that was agape love. Come on, somebody say agape love. And that's a sacrificial love. That's an unconditional love. And that's an unfailing love love. That means we love with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with everything that is in us. We love our spouse. Husbands, wives, you're to love one another with agape love. And Paul, what he does is he continues the same theme of agape love when it comes to the relationship between the parent and their children. How many know parents we're to love our children. And I know you love your children, but you're to love them so much that not only you want them to be good children, you want them to be godly children. Come on now. I read a, I read a quote. It says like this, one generation plants a tree and the next generation receives its shade. Think about that for a second. One generation plants a tree. They labor, they work, and the next generation reaps the benefit. Haven't we seen that take place here in the ministry of Victory Outreach? How our founders and our pioneer generation, they paved the way, they laid the foundation so many of us could come in and we can experience the blessing of Almighty God upon our lives. And the same with parents. The same thing with the moms and dads. You're to plant trees, trees of hope, trees of holiness, 
trees of righteousness. You're the soul, those seeds in your life. So as your children go grow older, they're going to see your example and they're going to want to do the same thing in their lives. I believe this. I believe this is true too. Every generation should progress and prosper beyond the former. Every generation, like if you're good, if you, you have kids, your kids should be able to go way beyond. If you were a high school graduate, your kids should be college graduates. Come on, somebody, right? If, if, if you made it and you're, you're drug free and you're alcohol free, well, your, your kids should go way beyond that. They should prosper way beyond where we are today. That's, that's what we're believing for. That's what we're believing. Even in, our, even in our spiritual children, we're believing that our spiritual children are going to reap the benefits of all the labor that we are laboring here today. You're going to see the work that was done through Run for Hope and the work that's done through United We Can and the work that is done through the local church. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pay benefits in years to come, those seeds that we're show, sowing. See, as disciples in the Lord, we're called to follow Jesus in every area of our life. You know, we believe we're disciples, right? And if, if you're a disciple, then in every area of your life, financially, spiritually, physically, you're called to follow Jesus as a disciple. And part of following him is to be on mission to reach lost people, hurting people, the outcasts, of society that's part of our mission but also a part of it is to reach and disciple our children in the way of the Lord we talked about last week how the the husband the father they're the high priest of the home you got to look at your home as a little church you look at your home as a little church and and you you and your your spouse you're the leaders of that church and your children they're your first congregation. Come on now, right? Part of what we do is not only to reach the drug addict and reach the gang member. Yes, that's real. But we want to reach the next generation that is here today. So as parents, as, as, a, as a parent, as a mom or a dad, you should be building for the future and not just for today. Don't settle for good children. Don't just settle for a, a high school graduate, a college graduate, someone with a good job or a good career. Don't just settle for that. That's good. That's part of it. But settle for a godly son, a godly daughter, someone that's going to carry on your spiritual legacy long after you're gone. So we should be building for the future. That, that's the type of God that we serve. We serve a God that is a generational God. He, yeah, he's a right now God. He's able to do something great right now. But the God we serve, he's also a generational God. He thinks three generations in the future. He thinks in the future. The Bible describes him as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Three generations. God is interested in not only us, but he's interested in your children and he's interested in your grandchildren. Your children's children will serve the Lord. Can you say that with me? My children's children will serve the Lord. Now, some people will just settle for good kids. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna force the gospel on them. I'm not gonna make them come to church. I just want them to be good kids. And yeah, that's okay. But you want a godly son. You want a godly daughter, can I hear you say amen? You want to know why? Because if you don't teach your children to follow Jesus, the world will teach them not to. You hear me this morning? If we do not teach our children to follow Jesus, the world, the spirit of this age will teach them not to. And there's all kinds of madness. There's all kinds of junk, all kinds of garbage out there today that your kids are hearing and seeing and we don't even know about it. Come on, somebody. You'd be amazed 
what goes on in school, what goes on on their cell phone. Come on, you know all the kids, teenagers got one of these. So we have to teach our children to follow Jesus. We can't just teach them to be good. We have to teach them to be godly. Look at Proverbs 22, verse 6. This is who we are. This is, this is part of our, our spiritual identity that we are a people who believe for our children's children's salvation. Proverbs 22, verse 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, we know here it means he and she, your son and daughter, right? But it says, train up a child in the way they should go, and even when they're old, they will not depart from it. That word train up means to dedicate. It means to dedicate your care. The first thing you should do, parents, is you should get that baby to the altar and you should present that baby to God to dedicate them to the Lord. In other words... This, this baby doesn't belong to me. God, it belongs to you. I'm a steward over this child's life. I'm here to take care of this child physically, emotionally, mentally, but also spiritually. Dedicate them to the Lord and also teach them to go in the Lord's way for their life. That doesn't mean you have to be a professor, a theologian, you can teach by example. Your kids can watch the way you live, the way mom and dad treat each other, the way mom and dad serve the Lord, the way mom and dad read their Bible, the way mom and dad get broken in prayer. And that's one of the greatest examples you could ever give to them. But then also there should be that time of family Bible study too. That time where you get along with your kids and you start sharing with them about the things of God. You talk to your children about the things of God. One of the greatest joys that I have is when I get on the phone with my, my oldest granddaughter and I begin to talk to her about the scripture and share with her about the things of God. And she calls and she has questions. Any, anytime you have a question about anything that you read in the Bible, call me and we'll talk about it. That puts a joy in my heart doesn't mean your kids are going to be perfect. My kids were far from perfect. But the promise is if I train them up in the way of the Lord, when they grow old, they will not depart. They might not like it. They might sit there all mad at you. You're making me come to church. You know how some of your kids are, right? But you have a promise from God when they grow old. They will not. One day they're going to come and say, Mom, I need Jesus. Dad, I need Jesus. See, we need to do this. We need to do it. We need to train our children. We need to dedicate our children because we're living in one of the most anti-family times in the history of the world. Did you know that? Did you know this is one of the most anti-family times in the history of the world? Let me give you a couple examples. The, 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 the entertainment industry. The entertainment industry, television, movies. No generation of parents in the past had ever had to raise children with the liberal media. Do you watch the shows on TV? Even the cartoons now? They have some crazy stuff on the cartoons, right? The movies now, even, even regular television is pretty crazy. Can I hear you say amen? All the liberal media... All the anti-God platforms that are now coming across on cable, right? On the Disney Channel, right? On regular ABC, NBC. Never in the history has it been so bad where the world is against the traditional. They say traditional, right? Like that, that one show, Modern Family. How many of you ever saw that show, Modern Family? That, that family is demonic. The devil's lying and they make it look so good that it's the way it's supposed to be. No, the devil was lying to that family. See, but the entertainment 
industry is telling our kids, no, this is normal. No, this is the way you're supposed to be. We've never faced that. In, in, the, in the history of parents, has never been this bad. No generation in the past has ever had to raise children who see violent movies filled with all types of sensuality and sexuality as we do today. It's worse today than it's ever been. And it's, it's right there. It's right there in the open. You know, they put the little disclaimer that, you know, some of these scenes uh, in this movie, but it's right there where they could just turn on the TV and watch it. What about the Internet? Come on, what about the Internet? You know, these things right here, right? That, that iPhone that you got your kid, right? With the click of a finger, with the click of a finger, they can view pornography. With the click of a finger, I was, I was with the guys and there was a song, we were, we were bowling last night, and there was a song that was playing, you know, they were, you know, playing worldly music in the bowling alley, and I started listening to it and I asked, I asked David, I go, is he talking about suicide, right? It kept saying suicide, you know, I go, what the heck? What kind of song is that? Do you realize that those lyrics are out there telling your kids to take their own lives? Never, never in the history of, of, of parenting have we had to deal with these kind of things. What about the liberal teachers in your kids' schools? You know they're there, right? You know there's some liberal teachers. You know colleges are full of liberal professors. They're way to the left. Now I'm not saying all teachers are like that, but you go to college you go, to a, you go to a college and, and a lot of it is anti-God. It's against the things of God. Never before in history have parents had to raise their children under these conditions. It's almost to the point where bringing a child into the world the way it is today is, is you know, that's, I feel bad for the kid. Unless there's a mom and a dad that will stand for the things of God and teach their children not only to be good, but teach them to be godly. We need some godly kids. And it begins at home. It's not up, it's not up to the church. It's not up to the Sunday school teacher. It's not up to the youth leader. It's not up to your, the teacher, the babysitter. It's up to mom and dad to build an altar in that home and raise their children. Train your children. Dedicate your children. Model it for your children, the things of God. So Paul does two things here in this portion of Scripture. He gives us instructions to the children and he gives instructions to the fathers. Let's look at the instructions that he gives for the children. You got to remember this. Remember this. The, the book of Ephesians wasn't a book. It was a letter. It didn't have chapters. It didn't have, you know, none of that. It didn't have verses. That was added later. It was a letter that was read. And what would happen, they would deliver the letter to the church and the pastor would read the letter to the congregation. And in those days, the congregation consisted of the adults, of teenagers, and of children. Everybody, every age group were, were sitting when that letter was read. It was, it was to the church, but in the church, you had everybody there. They were all in attendance and the children. So right then, as they said, and children, I can imagine the, the pastor who was reading the letter said, hey, give me your attention, child, give me your, parents, touch your children, give me their attention right now. This is meant for you. So look at what he says in verse one, two, and three. He says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Notice how he threw that in. In the Lord. That's right here telling the parents, you need to be in the Lord. He says, for this is right. Honor your father and your mother. This was the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you and that you may live, a, live long in the land. Now, as he was telling this to the children, 
the parents also heard this. As a parent, I would hear this and I would say, okay, God wants my children to obey me in the Lord. He wants me in the Lord. He wants me bringing my children to church and he wants them to obey me in the things of God. He wants my children to honor me and my wife, right? It's the first commandment. And he also says that it may go well with you and that you may live a long life in the land. Now, how many of you parents want your children to live a long life, a long, prosperous, and blessed? How many of you want, you want your children to succeed? Come on. Come on, give, give the Lord a hand clap if you want your children to succeed. So as a parent, I'm hearing this. You're hearing this. This is God telling us that we have to teach our children this way and that our children need to learn how to respond in this way. Now, for those of you that are still children, let's look at that word real quick. Because some people think when they get 12 years old, I'm not a child no more, daddy. The Greek word used for children here in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1, is the word technon. And what it means is offspring. Offspring. The meaning was, it's not an age thing for only toddlers or preteens. It's not something that you can grow out of. Can I hear you say amen? It meant that a son or a daughter doesn't come out from under the command to obey their parents until they go out and establish their own family and home. Do you hear that, teenagers? Can I hear the teenagers say amen? <laughs> See? So Paul is saying this simply, as long as you're living under your parents' roof, you should obey your parents' instructions. I have a rule in my house, and it, it's not only just for my, my, my children, but if you live in my house, you obey my rules. You live here, you go to church. That's the rule. You, that's, that's, that's the rule. You live in my house. You, we, we believe that even in our, in our homes and, and in our uh, reentry homes. If you're going to be in the men's home or the women's home or a reentry home, guess what? You're going to get up and pray. Guess what? You're going to go to the streets. Guess what? You're going to come to church. You're going to live godly. Because when you're living under someone's roof, you obey their rules. That's what Paul was saying. Praise the Lord. Well, now why would Paul say that? Well, it's simple. Children who learn to obey and respect proper authority will have a better chance at success in life. Let me say that one more time, parents. You need to get this. Children who learn to obey and respect proper authority will have a better chance at success in life. We, we're setting our children up for failure if we allow them to do whatever they want to do. We're setting them up for a rough life if we just don't care. Oh, I just want peace. I don't want no argument. I don't want no problems. We need to teach our children the principle of obedience to, to the parental, civil, and spiritual authority from an early age. Somebody say obey. Kids, we need to learn how to obey. All of us, we need to learn how to obey. First and foremost, God. And then whatever authority that God has ordained. Because all authority, parental, civil, you know the police, you know that stop sign that you're going to stop, that's authority. It's saying stop. And there's repercussions if you don't stop. Right? So we need to learn how to obey. We need to learn to teach our kids how to obey. Now it doesn't mean like you're, you're going to be some kind of drill sergeant. Or, you know, angry, a harsh person. No, you're doing this because you know you're going to set your kids up for success. The word obey, it means to submit to what is taught. Again, parents, you need to be teaching your children. It means to obey in response to someone speaking. 
You need to sit down with your children and say, listen, pay attention to what I'm telling you. I want, I want you to be successful. You need to let them know, I want you to have a great life. Parents are to speak the word of God over their children. You're to begin to pray. How many of you pray for your kids before they go to school? How many of you believe God and you speak the word of God over your children's life? I do. My kids are, what, 39 and 40, what, 42? I still pray over them scriptures every morning. They're not present, but I mean, no, the word of God is not changed. I can speak the word here and it can touch them on the east coast. I can speak the word here and it can touch them on the west coast. We are to speak the word of God over our children. You should always put your children in a place to hear and to respond to sound biblical teaching. Now, I know some people say, ah, you know, well, I've seen pastor's kids. They're the worst kids. Yeah, but we got a promise from God that if we train them, when they get old, they won't. Come on, somebody, they won't depart. See, if we don't tell them, the world will tell them, don't serve God. If you're not telling your kids you need to serve God, you need Jesus, just like I do someone on the streets, just like I would do to someone I know is lost and going to hell, I got to do it the same way to my family. My wife used to do it to me when I was a heathen. They would wit she would send people to witness to me. I knew it was her sending them to witness to me. Well, we got to speak life over our families. Can I hear you say amen? Because if we don't do it, don't complain and don't get upset when your children rebel. Because they will. It's in human nature to rebel. We all got a little rebellious streak in us. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, come on somebody. When we take his yoke upon our life, we submit to him. They say there's three kinds of parents today. There's the uninvolved, the over-involved, and the Christ-involved. The uninvolved parent will allow someone else, soccer coach, school teacher, a youth leader, to deal with their children because they're too busy. Just drop them off and pick them up. Drop them off and pick them up. How was school today? Drop them off and pick them up. How was soccer practice today? Drop them off and pick them up. How was the gang today? Drop them off and pick them up. They're uninvolved. Parents, you need to be involved. You need to be involved. You just drop them off and pick them up without ever having prayer, without ever having Bible study, without ever witnessing to your family. I mean, no, we got to witness to our family, to our loved ones. Then there's the over-involved. The over-involved parent forces their children, I'm going to make you, if you don't get in that car right now, I'm going to beat you like a Hebrew slave. Come on, somebody. They spy on their children. They have binoculars and they're down the street spying on their children. They never give their children an opportunity to develop a spiritual life. They use the things of God. I'm not going to let you go to youth if you don't behave yourself. That's the worst thing that you could do is keep your child home from church service as a punishment. They, they do that. They're, they're over-involved. They're, you know, they're, they never give their kids an opportunity. They never, you know, I'm not going to trust my kids to do it on their own. Then there's the Christ-involved. The Christ-involved parent wants their children to be responsible, good students, Involved in sports, attending church, but also learning to be godly. Again, we don't just want good children. We want godly children. Can I hear you say amen? So parents, you got to find, find a balance. You can't be too far one way and not even, not even ever tell your kids or sit down and have a conversation about the things of God or pray and lay hands on your kids and, and talk to them about Jesus. You can't get too far away from that and you want to be just hovering over them every minute where they get bummed out. That's why God's raised up young people. That's why he's raised up the gang. We got good examples. 
See, Paul said, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Here's the key, parents. We have to be in the Lord. Our children will obey us in the Lord. It's so important. He gives us four reasons that we should teach our children to obey. Number one, because we're believers. We're, how many believers are here this morning? See, I believe, I believe everything the Bible says. I believe the word of God is true. I believe the word of God is like a hammer that can shatter rock. I believe the miracles that took place in the Bible. If you believe, that's a good reason to teach your children obedience. Because this is God's way. Number two, because it's right. We want our homes to be right. It's right to teach your children. It's, it is right to train your children in the things of God. Nowadays, we live in a, in a culture where if you spank your children, you get in trouble. The Bible says, spare the rod, spoil the child. But you got to do it in moderation. You can't be beating them black and blue. But there should be some discipline in your house. Your kids shouldn't run you. You should run your kids. Why? Because we're believers. Because it's right. Number three, because it is commanded. This was a command from God. Train your children. The Hebrew people were taught. Train your children in the ways of the Lord. They were instructed to do that, to have that time of a Bible reading, that time of prayer, that time of coming together in the presence of God. It was commanded to them. Now we have choices. We say, I don't have time for that. And fourthly, he said, obey your parents in the Lord because it brings blessing. How many of you want your house to be blessed? Let's get, let's, get, let's get MTV out of the house. Let's get, let's get all that madness out of the house. And let's get Jesus in the house. Can I hear you say amen? <laughs> See, we have to teach our children to obey their mother and father, not only because we're the parents, but because it's a commandment from the word of God. Somebody say amen. He said, teach your children to obey. Secondly, Paul said, teach your children the principle of honor. Look at verse 2, Ephesians 6, verse 2. Look at what he says. Not only children obey, but children learn how to honor. He says, honor your father and your mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. Where does honor begin? Honor begins at home. Honor begins at home. The Hebrew word for honor means to hold in high regard, to respect, and to reverence. Kids should always look up to their parents. Kids should always hold their parents in high regard. What happened that our kids started looking down on us? What happened in the world that the kids began to get a low view of their mom and dad, began to disrespect, and began to lose that reverence for them. What happened? Something's wrong when they do that. They're getting that from someplace, and they're not getting it from you. Because I know as a parent, I would never tell my son or daughter, it's okay to disrespect me. No, 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 we ain't going there. So where are they learning that? If I'm not teaching them that, somebody is teaching. There's a spirit of the age that is teaching your children. The Bible even talks about in the end times, children will be disobedient to their parents. This word, honor your father and your mother, it was the fifth commandment that was given by Moses to the children of Israel in the Ten Commandments. This was the fifth one that he gave, but it was also the first commandment that came with a promise. The first commandment with a promise attached to it had to do with the family. The first commandment that came with a promise from God came to the family. Look at Exodus 20, verse 12. Go there. Exodus 20, verse 12. It says, honor your father and your mother. That sounds good, right, parents? 
Then you will live a long, full life in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Watch this. We talk about taking cities. We talk about taking countries. We, we, we believe in that. We participate in, in Run for Hope and in United We Can. And we're talking about taking cities and countries and nations. Well, this verse is telling us that it begins at home. He says, honor your father and your mother and you will live a long, full life in the land that the Lord your God has given you. How many know there's still land that God wants to give to us? And there's a promise for our children. Parents, hear this. There's a promise for your children of a long life that accompanies the honoring of mom and dad. See, obedience and honor sets your children up for future blessings. So we got to raise our kids in the things of God. We got we to gotta, we gotta get back to the biblical standard for our family. We can't allow what, what, whatever spirit that this world is trying to cause to creep in to our lives that will cause our kids to rebel and us to put up with us, us to sit back and say, it's okay, I just want you to be good. No, my friend, I don't just want you to be good. I want you to be godly. And part of being godly is that you learn to obey and honor because it sets your family up. It's going gonna, it's gonna to set your family up, your children, for future blessings. So let's look at number two. Let's look at the instruction he gave to the fathers. And it's funny how, it's funny how it's, he, Paul focuses on the dads. He didn't mention the mom in this verse. Look at what it says, Ephesians 6, verse 4. It says, fathers, can I hear the dad say amen? Fathers. Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, Paul might have knew something about dads, that dads probably can get on their kids' nerves more than moms. Come on, somebody. But that's not what it was. That's not what it was. The father was the head of the household. That's why he focused on the head of the household. Because back then, in, in, in this church, I imagine that the parents stuck together a little better than they do in this days that we live in. It wasn't so easy just to walk away from your wife and your children like people do today. You know, they probably didn't have deadbeat dads. Come on, somebody. So three verses, Paul dedicates to the children how they should obey and honor their parents. And then he comes with one verse to the father. And I believe he does it because the father is the head of the household and he's been given the ultimate responsibility for the way their children will be raised. Dads, we're going to stand before God. We're going to answer to God for the lack of or abuse. If we lack, if we don't get it, we're just a kickback dad and we don't, we, don't, we don't pray and we don't preach and we don't believe God for our children's salvation, if you just let them do what they want to do, we're going to stand before God. And if we abuse them, hear me, if physical, verbal, whatever, if you abuse them, you will stand before God. As the head of the household, the father is charged with the ultimate responsibility for the way, the way that children are raised. But the instruction that Paul gave, listen moms, the instruction that he gave was meant for both parents. And those sitting under the reading of this letter in the church of Ephesus, they understood it that way. They understood that when Paul was saying, fathers, he was talking to both of them. They understood that it meant mom and dad. They understood that they were commanded by God not to provoke or agitate their children. That's what that word provoke means. It means to exasperate or frustrate your kids. Sometimes we can do that. Come on, somebody. See, he means he's telling us to avoid unfair or harsh treatment or or even, watch this, showing favoritism. 
Come on. You, you even say, well, he's my favorite or she's my. No, don't say that. That, that could provoke your child. That is the wrong thing to do because how many know God has no favorites? He loves everybody here, right? And as a parent, we should never provoke, use unfair or harsh treatment or show favoritism. But let me tell you what it doesn't mean where it says not to provoke your children. It doesn't mean to compromise with them to keep the peace. We don't compromise with our kids because we want quiet in the house. Don't say nothing. I don't want to argue. Godly parents, don't push your kids towards anger, but instead give them a positive influence and bring them up in the things of God. That's what we have to do. So simply put, Paul is saying this, parents, you need to get involved in raising your own children. You need to get involved in Ray. You, you need to be the one. And he gives us two areas that we need to be involved in as parents. I'm going to give you these and then we're going to pray. Two areas mentioned. Number one, you need to be involved in the discipline and instruction of your children. Discipline. Say that with me, discipline. If you never discipline your child, you're going to spoil them. And it's going to hurt them. And I'm not saying get a belt and beat them, but I'm saying there has to be there has to be some type of discipline so your child can learn from their mistakes. Do you agree with me today? Discipline involves learning self-control. Your children have to learn self-control. It talks about the ability to restrain from personal desires in order to do what is right. Now I know. We look at our kids and we see them as kids, but they get to a certain age where inside of them, little desires start swirling around. Come on, somebody. And as a parent, it's your job. It's my job to discipline them so they can learn, so they can develop the ability to restrain from any personal desires that would try to lead them astray. Or peer pressure, what about that? You know there's peer pressure in your kids' schools where they're being, they're being talked to and told that, man, if you, come on, you ain't going to do this with us? No, I'm not. It's not because I'm a, I'm a punk or nothing. It's because that's not godly. They're going to have to get to a place where they're going to have to be able to stand for what is right. And the way they're going to learn to get to that place to stand for what is right is when the parent teaches them discipline. You discipline them in the home and they're going to live right on the street. Can I hear you say amen? Secondly, Paul adds the instruction of the Lord. We should be involved as parents. We should be involved in teaching our children about God's ways, both through education and example. Both through education and example. You gotta teach, you gotta teach your children first at home. I believe if we get our kids at a young age and we lay the right, right foundation, if we give them time and we lay a foundation, a spiritual foundation, when they grow older, they're going to live it out in their lives. So he's talking about the discipline and the instruction of the Lord, bringing your children up in the ways of God. Even if it means, hey, get in the car. This is, you, you live in my house, you go to church. And give me your phone. When, you, when I pull in the parking lot, give me your phone. Give me your phone. Give it back to you after service. Come on, somebody. That's that's your hey, You got to teach your kids. There has to be some type of discipline and instruction from mom and dad. Because if you're not teaching them, listen to me. If you're not teaching them to serve the Lord, the world is going to teach them not to serve the Lord. Do you hear me this morning? I want the musicians to come real quick.
Come on, let's all stand to our feet this morning. This is our identity. This is who we are as, as Christian parents. Paul is teaching us who we should be as husbands and wives, who we should be as moms and dads, who we should be as our family. We're not the modern family. No, my friend. We're the godly family. We're not just trying to build a good family. We're trying to build a godly family this morning. Come on, I want you to lift up your hands all over this room. We're going to sing a song. Just begin to worship the Lord this morning.